When we'd go out into the bush with our parents, we felt free and we could wander anywhere we wanted to. There was no restrictions. At the mission, um, we had to abide by rules and regulations. I think we, I felt as though we were prisoners within our own, own land. In the bush, we could do whatever we wanted. We could wander around and you know, pick up, uh, pick whatever we wanted from out in the bush where there were no, no one there to, to say, no, you're not allowed to. And we were taught by our parents about our culture. And uh, that's, I think that was the special times for me. My, my name's uh, Murray Wool, you know, born on the 3rd of October uh, 1949 out at the Lake Tyres uh, Mission. They were the um, good times. When the tourists would come along in a, in a big uh, tourist boat called a Bellbird and uh, they would have uh, plastic packets, little plastic satchels and they would have uh, 20 cents in them, uh, 50 cents in the in the plastic satchels and they would throw it to us in the water and then uh, you know we wouldn't have any swimming togs on so we just sort of dive in the water um, without any swimming togs on you know and show our bums and all that sort of stuff yeah sort of so that, that, they were the really um, good times you know and the best times of the lot. When we went to school there we we um we were taken down to the uh, what they call the bath house um, with the teachers and uh, the uh, manager's wife, who, who I remember as um, Mrs. Rule. Um, when we got there, boys bathed in one side of the bath house and uh, girls were all in the other side. And it was about five, five to one shower maybe four in the, in the tub and we stood in line to have medication. Um, at times we would have our hair checked if we had lice. You'd have no hair left. If you had your hair hanging long and it was not in in a ponytail, anything, you'd have it cut short. The rations were given out in the, in the old building there now. I think it was just so many, um, so much sugar to, it depended on how many children were in the family. The same with eggs or flour or any other thing. I think the painful times were when um, we had to do what we were told by uh, manager, uh, what we had to do and what we weren't allowed to do and what we were allowed to do. To me, thinking back, it wasn't really bad times. We may have been under welfare in those days, but there were happy times that we enjoyed and there were sad times that we, we didn't enjoy. I recall when we went to, went to school, we used to line up for, um, we'd have bread and jam and hot cocoa. And uh, yeah, we enjoyed those, those times. And we'd go up, but there's a big old pine tree that still stands to this day. And when we were kids, we'd go up and collect the pine cones from, you know, that had fallen and we'd make nests there and put the pine cones in the nest and we'd, we'd sit on them to make out you know, we were chooks. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I mean, they were happy times. Mum and Dad would wander down to the lakeshore and we'd go with them and um, we'd walk into the water with them they had, and we'd all twirl the weeds around the sapling and pull the weed in and we didn't have knives, we'd have broken glass and we'd cut the weed and that way that's how we'd catch shrimp and crabs and uh, to, to do the fishing with. And um, it, when the prawns were there, we were taught also to 
we didn't have nets. They'd make um, nets out of uh, what chook wire. And so we were also taught to put our feet through the um, into the sand. This was through the daytime where you uh, you could not see the prawn, but we'd put our feet and put it into the sand and push it along. And if we got a prick in the toe, then we knew there was a prawn. Then we'd reach down and grab it, and we'd sit for hours on end while they threw their fishing lines out. And we'd just sit there and watch the world go by. And I think that was very special. <laughs>